Let's now define a series. This is the main object of study of chapter 10. In everyday English, if I talk about a sequence of events or a series of events, those mean the same thing. In mathematics, they have very different meanings. A sequence is a list. A series is a sum. So we'll keep our summation notation, except instead of having a stop point up here, we have an infinity symbol. And we are adding infinitely many terms together. I hope we have seen enough by now that it won't come as a great shock that we can add infinitely many numbers together and get a finite number back. But let's look at a simple example of how this might work. We'll look at an interval of length one. And we'll cut this interval into two. This interval has length one half. Now take this remaining interval cut it into two. This interval has length one fourth. Take the remaining interval, cut it into two. This interval has length one eighth. Take this interval, cut it into two. We get one sixteenth. So if we take one half plus one fourth plus one eighth plus one sixteenth, we get to this length. Put in a one thirty second. And a one sixty fourth. And this interval is getting closer and closer in length to one. Now, if we ever stop, like if we stop here, of course, this won't quite be equal to one. But if we repeat this infinitely often, cut that into half, cut that into half, just keep doing that forever, it seems plausible 
that the infinite sum of these terms should equal one. Or another example. This is a proper improper integral. It equals one, which you would hopefully find it easy enough to show. I mean, this has an easy antiderivative. You replace the infinity symbol with a K. You take a limit. You do get to one. Now this integral is the area under the curve over an infinite interval. It should make sense that if you take the area under the curve from zero to one, and you take the area under the curve from one to two, and from two to three, and from three to four, and so on. And you add all of these areas together, you should get the total area under the curve. Well, there are infinitely many intervals like this. So what I'm saying is that if you take an infinite number of areas and add them together, you should get a finite area. So hopefully we don't have any trouble believing that such a sum might exist and be a finite number. How do we define it? With the limit. Of course, the way we've defined everything else that matters in calculus. We define the limit from some starting value to infinity. of this sum very similarly to the way we define improper integrals. We replace the infinity symbol with a finite number and take the limit as that finite number goes to infinity, and we see what happens. A bit of terminology. These sums whose limits we're taking are called partial sums, because they're not going all the way up to infinity here, you're only going part of the way. So an infinite series is the limit of partial sums. And that limit might exist or it might not. If this limit exists, then using 
the terminology we used back in improper integrals. This series converges. Otherwise, it diverges.